Good morning, Rab Boisai. Ah! Lili Nishmasi Mima Rossi Ruspas Mordechai. Uh, happy 16th birthday to Yisrael Dov Farkovitz. May today's learning be a chus for him and the whole family. It's Cyril Avram Meir and Osher Zilik Farkovitz. Wow, I just met him. The Kessler family. Rafur Shleim, Aliza Tova, Bas Esther Gruno, Yikasil, Moshe Ben Sora, Pechas Leo, Ben Nechemit, Tilio, Silch Aliza Bas, Klor Yehuda, Yosef Ben Rivka Esther. Ba Yehuda Chef, Lili Nishmas, Rav Shlomo Ben, Rav Chaim Zev, Rav Shlomo Gissinger, Mored Ashrov, KJ, Zichin Yaakov, Lakewood, on his second yard side, I believe. By Marilyn Greenberg, for Rufur Shlema, for my dear granddaughters who have the virus. Maya Gabriela Batsara, Elish, Elisa Nessia Batsara, Ashra Mea Batsara. Ooh. Okay. Oh, I think this goes together with the other one. Here we go. Sorry. So, sorry. Where's the other one? Lili Nishma said, Rav Shlomo ben Chaim Zev. Shlomo again. So you're on a second yard side. And Pinchas ben Chaim Yudah Levi. Pinchas Ison, former president of the National Council of Young Israel, Yishu Rav Chaim Berlin, on his 30th yard side on Shabbos Yud Gimelel. By Hill and Ezra Abrams, in honor of the Ezra grandmother, Pasha Bas Avram and Shalom. She's very proud that her many grandchildren, great grandchildren, great great grandchildren are showing me Torah mitzvahs, and especially that her two grandchildren are part of the Shir. By Menachem Braun, in honor of my dear wife Chaya, whose eyes light up when our sons and myself learn Torah. Beautiful. We have a lot, a lot of emails and stuff to say over here, so I'm going to have to cut out a bunch, I think. Where do I start? First of all, the pictures. This is by M. Landy. He's on the way to Six Flags in New Jersey, I believe. What I've never learned in a car before, my wife drives anyways because I have to work, but I'm able to have the shear on when I can. Here he is in his car. You don't see him, but you see me. Shkoyach. Beautiful. Now, this is by Moshe Dax. I don't know how he's related to Shlomi. I know Shlomi watches the shear. The son came over to me, he said, Shalom Aleichem. So another Dax. I'm one of the many who are successfully learning. Listen, this is a theme about the free Gemara. That's it. So here's somebody who's learning by the free Gemara. And Baruch Hashem, after years of starting, stopping, starting, stopping, starting the rest of the world and going sporadic on my own pace, I've been going strong with Yishir ever since the Ferris wheel started in Sukkah. Aside from the world of So, charts, pictures, right amount of jokes. I've seen that you get a kick of people sending in the pictures of the Lech Techov in action. Absolutely. I'm on vacation with my wife and couldn't resist bringing this Shir we on one of our outings, and as I don't have an Instagram account, instead of doing it for the gram, I'm sending this picture to you instead. Attached is a picture of the Hadron for Perik Lulav Agozo live from Grand Canyon. I wasn't able to make it to Shabbat Brachas, Moishi Dax. Here you go, live from the Grand Canyon, Givaldic. This, Rabbi Sai is the Jewish home. We are on the cover somehow, right over here. Okay. The whole story there with, uh, with the top cop in New York. So, this is a long email. How much time do we have here? Okay, I was going to read it a little bit later. Maybe I'll read half of it now and half of it when it comes in again in the Gemara. This is very important. This is a guy from the Sephardic Syrian community. My name is Isaac Sarder. I'm from Brooklyn. I recently heard your podcast on Meaningful People. I was really inspired by the whole life story in the Dafyomi family. Rosh Hashanah is coming up, and I thought Dafyomi would be a nice Kabbalah for the new year. The decision to really jump in was also the fact I found out my brother Yossi does not doubt. I've known him for so long, never knew he did something so special. He gave me the final push. I worked long hours. I made a prayer to Hashem to help me stay committed. He davened to Hashem that he should be able to start the daf and asked Hashem to help me work less and be able to learn more. And so I began my first daf today. Daf Mem Beis in Mesech the Sukkah. I was so tired and tried rationalizing why not start tomorrow with a new parak. But I remember what you said on the podcast. Don't wait or push off inspiration. Do it right away. And so I did. I just finished it at 12 a.m. And now writing up this email before I go to sleep. I love your videos editing style and humor. I want to be part of your fa- Daf Yomi family. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay. I'm praying that it really works. It's not, oh, And he says, I also love your saying. It's not about the Daf. It's about the Yomi. We should get that framed or something. Rabbi Isai, why did I just read that? 
Because I want to go back to that email a little later. It's Negea in the Sugya. Of how you don't push stuff up, off. You have an inspiration, you do it right now. So, I just uh, spoke to Yossi Klein maybe an hour ago. He's in the middle of his son's bar mitzvah. And over 200 people sent in Mazel Tov wishes to him. And they put it together in a nice binding. As a Karsat Tov, Yossi Klein spearheaded the initiative of giving out a free Gemara for Mr. Sukkah. And he put his father on the phone. And his father tells me, I want to tell you something. A guy came over to me, the father says, and said, you know, my son starting, started being Shomer Shabbos because he got a free Gemara and started learning the daf. So I was in a car with Ellie Dykman. We were going to uh, Lakewood. And somebody texted me that there's somebody that wants to speak to me about donating a large amount of Gemara. So I called him up. And it happens to be that a half hour before, also in the car, I was speaking, maybe even less, speaking to Nassan Gans, And he said, listen, Masech Beta, we don't need to make a push for it because it's the middle of Yom Toivim. It doesn't make sense to give free Gemaras to that. But Yossi Klein says, it does. Kids, I said, why not? Even if we get 100 people from it, it's Kedai, 100 people learning Torah might finish us. And then I call up this individual. His name is Mirad Nakash. And he tells me, listen to this mice or a boy say, it's crazy. He has a chavrusa, he's big into learning. His fat wife, kids, push him to learn. And he's learning with his chavrusa, and he tells his chavrusa, you know, I do this daf with this guy, Stefanski. I think you should do it also. So his chavrusa says, what do you mean I should do it also? I, of course, I do it already. He says, you do it? Yeah. I got a free Gemara sukkah. He says, you got a free Gemara sukkah, and you start because of the free Gemara? Yeah. Says Murad. If so, I want to be huge in the next Masechta. I want to take on the Masechta. I want to be a huge part of it. Indeed, he already wired a crazy amount of money. There's still availability in the Masechta, but he took upon himself, unbelievable, because his Chavruz, he got a free Gemara from Yossi Klein, he decided, and it's unbelievable, and we see one thing after another. His Chavruz is named, by the way, uh, Eddie Farsati, I think his name is. Okay. That's, they learned two, two Syrians from Deal. They came to see the Shear live in Lakewood. They were there. We took pictures. Those out. So here you got a guy that sent me an email also from the Syrian community. What's his name? Isaac Sardar and Farsati. The kids are the Gansa Oilam. Mozi Shabbos, by the way, Shear at 9 30. I am still in Bidud. I still can't come out of my house. That's why I'm here by myself. Somebody wrote me an email. That uh, he actually likes the sheer better when I'm by myself. I'm less distracted, no jokes. Okay, those are for the serious people. Other people said they miss they miss Nachman Seltzer, they miss the whole Balagan that goes on in the base marriage, the singing sometimes. Okay. Boy Sai, here we go. We are definitely giving on base, slightly behind. We're all going by Ace like 12 lines from the bottom. And we're in the middle, Rav Yosef says. That who says that we had an Arava, we used to bring Arava in the base of Who said everybody held it like we do today in Hashanah? We hold a lulav and we walk around the bima. Maybe they push it, they took the, the, the Arava and they put it up against the Mizbeach. Now, we know that they did that and we actually have pictures of it. But who says that that's maybe, maybe that's the only thing they did? Let's see if I can find the picture. Yeah. Here, this is the picture that we have from the time of the base of you could see that the Aravas are leaning on the Mizbeach. They're not even holding them. So we're going to say, maybe it's like this. Okay, everybody agrees that that's what happened, but maybe they also went around with an Arava. We don't know for sure. So Eisve, Abai asked another question. It seems like people did hold the Arava in their hand and they walked around the Mizbeach. We're talking about Koyhanim. Koyhanim walked around the Mizbeach. Lulav doiches a Shabbos b'tchilosoy. A Lulav pushes off Shabbos. Where's that one? Here. If Shabbos falls out on day one, you shake a lulav on Shabbos, only on day one. And Arava pushes off Shabbos if it falls out on day seven. That's the only way it works. But if Shabbos falls out on day four, you don't push, you don't shake a Arava. If Shabbos falls out on day four, you don't shake a lulav. Only if Shabbos falls out on the first day. Okay. So Arava on the seventh day. Pamachas story time. Pamachas chal shvi shel 
Arava Aliyah's Bishabbos. It once happened that this exact thing happened. The seventh day of Sukkot fell out on a Shabbos. Ve'eviu Murbiyos Shal Arava. Now Murbiyos is a Lushan of beautiful, large Aravas, nice Aravas. Me'erev Shabbos V'nichum Ba'azara. So again, the Mishnah says, you should bring your lulav before Shabbos, you don't want to carry it. Bring it to the Beis HaMikish beforehand. V'nichum Ba'azara, they put it in the Azara. Ve'kiru Ben Baitoisim, the troublemakers. We're familiar a lot, the, the, the Gemara always talks about the Tzdukim. So there's two Talmidim, Tzadik and Baitois. They're basically the same idea. They don't believe in the Torah Shabbat Pep. They don't believe in the explanations of the Torah. Where does it say in the Torah anywhere? They have an Arava, as we're going to see, we mentioned yesterday, Arve means two. I don't believe in that. Arve doesn't mean that you take an Arava and go around the... the okay. So they decided to cause trouble. They see the Arava sitting around in the Beis Migdash. They decided to play some hide and seek. So they take the Arava and hide it. And they, they buried it under stones. Now a stone is Mukti. And I'll touch a stone on Shabbos. They figured the Chachamim won't have a choice. They won't be able to touch the stones. The Amoritz. What's Amoritz? If you're new to the Shir, <coughs> we like to call it Amoritz. Amoritz. This guy shows up. Oh, I see that rubber on the stone. What do I do? What? You move the stone. It doesn't happen. It's mukta. The, Amar- the Amaratzim wanted to be with the, with the, with the Tamid Chachamim. They didn't want to be with the Baitoisim. So the Amaratzim went ahead. Ushmot Metach Zavan took. Baruch Atah Adin Noir Lekinem Al Chilom. Shakur Niyem Didn't drink in a while. <coughs> Sorry. So then the Arabs were exposed from the stone. I saw the shame Shmuel says, beautiful. We mentioned the name of the Talmud Rashba that the Arava resembles the Jew that's an Amaret. Doesn't have tire, it doesn't have a smell, and it doesn't have a flavor. It doesn't have Torah, it doesn't have Gemilis Chassam, it doesn't have anything. So, it comes to, to, to say that on Sukkot, when we have such Achtos, we put the Amoritz together in the bundle with the Hadas, with the Tamad Chacham, with the, with the, the, the Hatzalot guys, the, the Goimli Chassadim people, you know, all, the, all, all Jews are together. <clears throat> so, they decided to do something with the Arava that resembles them. It comes... They had to take out the Arava and, and make sure that we have the Arava, we have the Amaratim to show that that's what the Yadav is all about. Celebrating all the Jews, all types of Jews, even the, the non-learned ones. What's going on? Shame by Taisim them because these by Taisim guys don't agree. Shechibot Arava, Doichas Shabbos. Typically in Hebrew, Chibot is to bang. It's Chibot a caver, you get all beat up in the caver. Chibot. Rashi explains chibot, and later on the sugya, some Rishonim will argue a little bit, but chibot means to shake, to shake the arava. And they hold that moving the arava does not push off Shabbos. The big tzaddikim, they hold, no, it's also, it's also to, to shake a arava on Shabbos. But what do you see from here? Alma benetilahi, the word chibot means to shake the arava. So, Rabbi Yosef, how do you say that in the Beis Hamikdash they took these Arabas and they simply put them up against them as Bayach. But they didn't carry the Arab at all. They didn't shake it like a lulav. Over here it says Mefurish in the story. We bring a story to, br- to, to bring a point. The point is, Ein Batoisim Moidim Shechibut Arava. The, the Baitoisim don't believe in shaking a lulav. It doesn't say in shaking Arava. They don't, it doesn't say the Baitoisim don't believe in putting an Arava up against them as Bayach. It says they don't believe in shaking it. To Yuftan, it's a bomb question. Now, just as a side point, why didn't they bring a guy? What was the big deal? So they hit it on the rock. Bring a guy, because a guy cannot go into the Azara. Says the Gemara, Ve'elo nitchu. So for this, we have to go slightly backwards. Yesterday we said <clears throat> that what happened was the um, it was so important this this arava that 
they put it up against the Mizbeach. And they put up against the Mizbeach, it doesn't push off Shabbos. In our days, we don't have a Mizbeach, we said yesterday. There's no, there's no Mizbeach. So how, do you, how could you commemorate something that doesn't exist? What, are you gonna, you're going to take an Arava? We don't have a Mizbeach. The whole, the whole base Hamidosh was, you took the Arava, put it against the Mizbeach. But if you're telling me that I could prove to you that they didn't put the Arava on the Mizbeach. They actually took the Arava and walked around. So if they walked around, why can't we commemorate that in our days when there's no Beis HaMikdosh? Let's commemorate them walking around, walk around the Bima with an Arava. Velo Nitru. Says the Gemara, Kivin Anan, Loi Dachinon. Inu Nami Loi Dachu. Okay, so it's a beautiful thing here. Rashi says, since in Golos, we don't, we're not Mechal Shabbos, so to speak. We don't push off Shabbos with the Sarava. Why? In Golos, in Babel, because we don't know about the calendar. We're not sure if Yantav actually started here or here. So therefore, when it comes Shabbos, we don't know if it's here or here. So we, you, might be, you, you might not be celebrating the seventh day. Maybe it's the, the sixth day. So Mela, in Golos, we don't do it. So the, therefore, Amri uh, says the Gemara, "Kivin anan loy dachinon inu nami loy dachu." So therefore, in Eretz Yisrael, we don't push off either. And we're going to see in a second what Rashi says. As the Gemara of Yanta of Harishain, "Dli dan loy dachi will do dachi." But what about the first day of Yanta? And we say in the first day of Yanta we push off in Eretz Yisrael. We don't push it off in Golos. Amri do nami loy dachi. Yeah, you're right. In Eretz Yisrael, you shouldn't push it off. Why? So look, if you look at the top Rashi over here, why should Eretz Yisrael be the same like Golos? says, Rashi, Shaloi Lassois Yisrael Agudais Agudais. Kla Yisrael should not look like two different groups. I don't know if you want to go into this whole Achtas thing, but you cannot make different groups in Kla Yisrael. Venerik is state Tyrex. When certain Jews or certain places, they, they, they shake a lulav. And certain places do not shake a lulav. So it looks like we have two different tyrants. It doesn't look good. Klai Yisrael has to be one. They have to be doing the same exact thing. They, can, they have to be careful not to look like two different groups, like two different tyrants. Ve'elo, now we're top of Daf Mem Dalet Om Ve'elo, Kasha Hani Tarti. We have a contradiction. What's the contradiction? The Dona Chada we spoke about yesterday. This is in one Mishnah that they bring the Lulav to the Beis HaMikdash. And it says in the other Mishnah, in the Fimim Aleph, the Beis HaKnesses. Is it to the Harabais or to the Shul? Which one is it? Um, Tarzino, and yesterday we said, Kam is much of Beis HaMikdash Kaim, Kam is much of the Beis HaMikdash Kaim. The difference between the two Mishnahis is, when there's no Beis HaMikdash, you bring the Lulav to Shul. When there is a Beis HaMikdash, you bring it to the Beis Hamikdash, but we answered that even when there's no Beis Hamikdash, you do push off Shabbos. So why are you telling me that even in Eretz Yisrael you don't push off Shabbos, like we do today? We live in Eretz Yisrael. We don't shake a lulav on Shabbos, like the Gemara said. The first words on the summit, Amir, Lididu, Nami Leidachi. You don't push off Shabbos in Eretz Yisrael when there's no Beis Hamikdash. You don't shake a lulav, but we said yesterday that you do. Because there's a mission that says you bring your lulav to shul. And it's, there's no base on Mikdash. It's talking about like today. You bring your lulav to shul on Shabbos. Loi. You're right. Therefore we have to retract what we said yesterday. You do not bring your lulav to shul on Shabbos. So what about the contradiction in the Mishnahis? They're both talking about in the time of the base on Mikdash. One mission is talking about in Yerushalayim. So you live close to Beis Hamidosh, bring your Lulav to Beis Hamidosh. If you live far, far away, you live in Tveria, you're not going to schlep your Lulav to Beis Hamidosh. You, didn't, you weren't Euler Regal that year. You're too old or whatever. You bring your Lulav to Shul. But it's talking about in time Beis Hamidosh. Why is it in our days, today, no Beis Hamidosh? You take a Lulav, Seven days. Every day. Why? To commemorate the Beis HaMikdash. Say, oh, in the time of the Beis HaMikdash, it was a, the Arisa to bring a Lulav in the Beis HaMikdash. So today, in Chicago, we bring Arava seven days, Lulav seven days, to remember that. So this Minog that we have, 
that we go oh, Hishanas with our Rava, just with our Rava, one day. So nice attempt. He says, you know why? Because there's an Arava, one of the four minim is called Arava, and we use Arava, so that's the commemoration. What are you talking about? You can't tell from his shaking of the lulav that there's a mitzvah called Arava. Nobody knows that. It looks like you're shaking a lulav. You are in fact shaking a lulav. You're not shaking an Arava. Oh, wow. I didn't read that email, but maybe I should. Here. I don't know if we have time for it. Here we go. This guy tells me, Good morning, Rebelli, Aaron Sittner. I'm writing this morning in defense of Nusach Sfar. The recent days have been an inordinate amount of Sfar bashing in the year. Very sensitive guy. If I remember correctly, you mentioned how complicated it is to shake the love of Nusach Sfar three days in a row. It's not so complicated. Right, left, front, up, down, back. Not complicated at all. Right, left, front, up, down, back. Right, left, front, up, down, back. Okay, fine. Not complicated. Maybe it means we Sfar David is a smarter. 100%. Much smarter. Let me ask you this. Why does Ashkenaz put away the lulav after Halal and take it out after Musaf for Ishanas? Sfar is smart. We do Ishanas right after Halal. Ashkenaz is plenty confusing sometimes. Givaldik. The reason why Ashkenaz puts away the lulav is because of this. Right over here. They don't really. I think they get lazy. In our show they don't. They do it right away. But maybe they should. I think it's better to put your lulav away and take it out for Ishanas. Because of this. Maybe I'm showing by putting down my lulav and then lifting it up again. So now people understand, look, you shook your lulav, you were yaitza mitzvah's lulav, now you put it down, and now you lift it up again, now I'm doing a shanas. You see, Aaron, you're supposed to put it down to show that you're doing a shanas. The Gemara says it. That's why if you learn dafiyayimi, you get smarter. Forget Ashkenaz fire, you get smarter by doing dafiyayimi. Okay, but at the end of the day, the Gemara says, not everybody put down the lulav. Look, there's Nusach Sfar. They don't put down the lulav every day. So, it's not Mukhach that you're going around Mishanas. You're going around the, the Bima because of the Arava. If everybody put their lulav down and then lifted it up again, okay, but not everybody does that. Omar So, he says a better text, different text. Lulav the Raisa of Dinan You want to know why? Today, we shake a lulav seven days a week, seven days on Sukkot and Arava only one day on Ishan and Rabba. Lulav the Rai Savdin and Shiva Zechel Amigdosh. Arava the Rabbanon, Lo Yavdinon, Lo Shiva Zechel Amigdosh. This is going to put us in a spin compared to what we said yesterday. The Gemara is saying that lulav is the Rai Savdin, Arava is not the Rai Ooh, not the Rai Liman. Ilay Malaba Shaul. As we mentioned yesterday, Ha'oma Arvei Nochal. It says in the Pasuk, if you think about it, how does the Torah refer to an adas? Anaf, eight, avais. Singular, singular, singular. Anaf is one, eight is one. But also when it comes to aravas, it says arve, plural. Why? Oh. Shtayim, achas lulav. One arava, in other words, the two aravas that we put in the lulav. Vachas l'mikdash. And however many aravas we do, in the Beis Hamidah, you go around the Mizbeach. Either Rabbanon, and according to Rabbanon, it's Allah Lomash Messina. So why are you telling me this is the Rabbanon? <laughs> The least it is, is Allah Mishmasina, which is the Raisa, or it says in the Torah, Avernach, which is certainly the Raisa. Here, remember this Gemara, we had it before. Here, I'll remind you the picture. Ten small trees. This picture, by the way, was, was, um, was a magnified picture. These are, very, these are baby trees. You just understand that these are baby. It was taken with a, a large lens from very far away, and it looks like, okay, whatever. Just pretend these are small trees. Ten of them are mutter. You're not, okay, so we're talking about Shemitah. This coming year, remember, it was a big nace. We learned the sugya 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, and it happens once every seven years. Now what? 30 days before Shemitah, you're allowed to plow these trees and because they're babies, they might die, so you're allowed to, you're allowed to do that. Typically, you have to be moisif to Shemitah, you're not allowed to plow your field 30 days beforehand. But if they're babies, and how much? If you have 50 yama, by 50 yama, you're allowed 10 trees within that area. Two, two and a half thousand square amas. Fine. 
That's halacha lemesh mesinai. Arava, which we're discussing, according to this mandama, halacha lemesh mesinai. Moshe Rabbeinu heard it from Hashem on Har Sinai. V'nisach ha'mayim, pouring the water on top of the mizbech. Halacha lemesh mesinai. By the way, we're going to have it a few times. The same exact words. We know what it is now. El amar zvidim shmei the rava. Okay. So again, why are you telling me that Rav is the Rabbana when Rav is the Raiso? Says the Gemara, Allah, when Rav is the Mishmei, the Rav, a lulav this lay ikur minatur big vulin. A lulav, which, as we had in this chart, you're supposed to reshoin gvulin. You're supposed to shake a lulav in everywhere outside of your shalayim gvulin. So, memela, abdin le shiv zech le mikdash. So it's a more powerful mitzvah in, the, in that time as well. So now we commemorate it seven days. Arava, the last day you can be big vulid. But Arava, you not you don't you never took an Arava outside of the base Hamigdash. Shiva So therefore, there's no commemoration seven days. It's a one-time, a one-day commemoration. Zechar Limigdash. Omar Shlakish. Brand new sugyo. Koyhanim bali mumim. If a koyin has a mum, and typically a koyin that has a mum cannot go into certain places in the base hamikdash, he can't perform that by this. He can't go in. Nichnasin bein haulam vilamizbeach. So first, I thought I'll show you this. This is the mizbeach, and this over here is the ulam. But I don't think that does justice. Where is this? What is this? So I could show you the map, but better yet, <laughs> I figured why not? I'm in my house. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa, here we go. See this beauty. The oil got this for me for the Siyum on Masechtas Yuma. This is the Ulam. This structure is 100 feet tall. If you look inside, this is the Azara over here, and this is the Mizbeach. So, this area right between the building and the Mizbeach, a Kayin that has a mom, look at this thing, unbelievable. A Kayin that has a mom is not allowed to go there. However, since he has a chiyuv for an arava, he has a chiyuv deraisa to hold on to the arava, do a kafa with the arava. This hisser that he can't go between the mizbeach is pushed off either because it's an assay to go there, an assay doicha loisase, or it's only the Rabbana not to go there. Whatever the reason is. Let me just get Mark off my thing here for a second. Bye, Mark. Okay. It was great learning with you one on one. Now I want to learn with the rest of the island. Hi, Ellie. It's like Bernhack. Ah, you have Valdic. No, I'm fixed. How you doing? All right. I can't wait to get to the base It's like, I feel like I'm talking to myself, whatever. Who said this thing? Who told you Rishlakish, his brother-in-law? Who told you this thing? Miyamara? What a funny question. How you, Omar? <laughs> Reuchen himself said it. When he said it. Now what? That there's a mitzvah de raisa to shake an arava. And if there's a mitzvah de raisa, that's what the Gemara thought, that he's asking. Who said there's a mitzvah de raisa? No, Rabbi Omar Rabbi Yochan. Rabbi said in the name of Reuchen. Rishon Rabbi Nechunin ish bigas beis chorsan. Esen etiyos. We just had it a second ago. This ten samplings. On Erev Shemitah, Arava, Benisuch HaMayim, Halacha Lomash Mishinai. Here, Rabbi Yechelen said that the Sheikh and Arava in the Beis HaMidosh is Halacha Lomash Mishinai, which every Kayin, even a Balmum, should perform and walk next to the, between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. Elo mi Amara Benetilo, Dilma Beskifa. Rabbi Yechelen was asking, who said that you have to walk around with the Lulav? That, every, that with an Arava, that every single person in the Shevet Levi, in the, the, all the Kayanim, have to walk around. Maybe it's Biskifa. Maybe it means just that the Arava is leaning on the Mizbeach. And look, everybody else is, is holding their Lulav and they're going around, but they're not holding Aravas. Therefore, if it's Biskifa, means one person did it for everybody. How many of these giant trees are there? You, you have 40,000 Kayanim. You think you have 40,000 trees? One Kayan was a Shliach for everybody and he put it on the Mizbeach. If it's to walk around the Hekev, each client has to do it. And if each client has to do it, so even if you're a Balmum, you do it. So Rabbi Yochanan asked, who said that you have to walk around with an Arava? 
Or another question he asked them, Mi Bali Maybe that mitzvah was only given to people that don't have a mum. Not going to have a mum. Okay, no, with no answer to that. Itmar, another question. Big nafkimina. Did the Nevi'im institute the Arava? And therefore, I'm going to see what it means. Therefore, there's a bracha you make. You commanded us. How did you command us? Because the Navi commanded us. And the Navi, there's a chiyuv to listen to the Navi. You have to listen to everything he says. So if you have to listen to what a Navi says, then it's vitzivanu. Or it's just a minute. If the Navi said, let's do a minute, let's do a nice thing, it's a good, it's a good hanaga to put it in a rov in the, in the base of Migdash, to go around, around, you don't make a brach on it. It's not vitzivanu. I can prove the Rabbi Yechon Doma Yisoy Nevi'im. I'll prove to you that Rabbi Yechon said that it's actually instituted and you have to say a bracha. Doma Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon in the name of Rabbi Yechon. Arava can't get any better than this, this raya. Arava Yisoy Nevi'im. He says specifically, it was established and it's Zechi of bracha. Testai, great raya. All the Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon Anachi, Rabbi Yechon really say so. Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon Anachi, Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon Anachi, Here we go again. Eser Netiyas, the ten samplings on Erev Shemitah. Arava. Arava, to take Arava Yisam Mikdash is a Dairaisa, not a Navi said to do so. V'nizuch ha'amayim, halacha l'mish b'sina. Says the Gemara, Eshtoimam kisho chado. He was silent for a moment. He thought about how to answer this. V'omar shecheichum v'chazru v'yizdum. The Golas of Bavel, like we mentioned yesterday, it caused Klai Yisrael to forget certain halachas, certain minogim, and that's where a lot of the machlokism started. They forgot. They forgot about it. And the Nevi'im, they came and they reinstituted it. But they reinstituted. They didn't institute it. They just brought back something old. Very interesting, because I was thinking to myself, I thought it's many times a shah. I don't know. I, I thought to myself it's eight times. So I did a search on Barilan, and it came out with four. And then I said, wait, wait, what was the Mishra Shas say? And the Mishra Shas means five. So in fact, the Mishra Shas is better than Barilan. He, he knew Shas better. Because I went, it's in Kiddushin as well. But in Kiddushin, there's an extra Yud. Ish Toimim, they put a Yud in there. And the, the Barilan didn't pick it up. Very, th- I, I couldn't believe it. Here, the Mishra Shas knows more than the computer. V'omar, Shcheichem Yisrael. Fine. Umiyomar, Rabbi Yechonachim. So listen to this. It's a long story, but we got to say the story. Wow, we're running out of time. Okay, very long story. So I'll try to shorten it. How do I shorten it? Rav Kahana killed a man. It was a moiser. So his Rebbe Rav told him, run away to Israel. Go to Rabbi Yechonon. Don't ask Rabbi Yechonon questions for seven years. Rabbi Shlokish introduces Rav Kahana, who's very charif, Rashi says. Charif ma'id, he says. Introduces him, says, Ari Olam Bavel. A lion came from Bavel. So Rabbi Yechon says, Yeah, he's a lion. He starts asking questions. He starts saying Gemara, and Rav Kahana doesn't say anything. He says, This is an Ari. This is a fox. He's not a lion. Put him back. Put him seven rows back. So he put him seven rows back. The Kitzer, they said, a whole story. He asked, he told him, So Rav Kahana took that as seven years. Seven rows, seven years. So he was able to answer him. He asked a question. He answered another question. And every time he answered a question, Rav Kahana, Rabbi Yechon took out a cheer. And finally, Rabbi Yochan says, I need to see this person's face. So they lifted up his eyebrows. He had very heavy eyebrows. And he sees Rav Kahana smiling at him. He thought that he's making fun of Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan Iqbid, he felt he was hurt. And Rav Kahana died. So tell me them say, why did you kill him? He has an imperfection on his lip. Maybe he had a split lip or something. It looks like he's smiling, but he's not smiling. This is, how, this is what he looks like. This is a little crooked, whatever. It looked like he's smiling. So he goes to his grave, to the Ma'ara, and there's a big snake there. And finally he says, let a Talmud come to the, to, let a Rebbe come to the Talmud, the snake doesn't move. Finally he says, let a Talmud come to the Rebbe. I, Rebbe Yechanan, are you Rav Kahana's Talmud? And the snake ran away. In other words, that's how great Rav Kahana was. He took him back, he asked him all these questions, and then he said this line right over here. I used to say that Torah belongs to you guys in Eretz Yisrael. And the people in Bavel, they forgot it, they had a lot of tsaris, they don't know that much Torah. 
But now I see that they have people like Rav Kahana, Dilhoini. They didn't forget anything. So why are you telling me that they forgot the Torah and they forgot such a big halacha of Arava? You have people like Rav Kahana, there's no way they forgot the Torah. Says the Gemara, you're right. Now let's, let's say another Torah. Loi Kasha. We have a contradiction. Kan be Migdash, Kan Big Vulin. The halacha of the Mishnah that Rabbi Yochan was talking about is in the time of the Migdash. In the Migdash, it's halacha of the Mishnah. But in Gvulin, outside of the Beis Migdash, in, Yushal, in uh, Tveria, let's say, that the Nevi'im instituted, even in the time of the Beis Migdash, they instituted it to go to, to do a commemoration to the Mizbeach. So we just turned to Daphne Mdal and Mizbeach, sponsored by the MDY Tehillim Group. For all those who need Shidduchim Rapuz Yeshua's, please join to Tehillim.com. And by Shlomo Lazarian from LA in honor of Eli's wife for sacrificing her life in order for Eli to prepare. I have to say this three days in a row. Shlomo, maybe you could change the Lashon a little bit. Omer Abami. Arava Tzricha Shir. This Arava that we bring to the Beis HaMikdash needs a specific Shir. What is it? We're going to see in a second. Venenit Telus Elubef Neyatzma. You don't shake it together with the Lulav. You hold it like we do in Hashanah Rabba. All the Aravas just by themselves. It's almost a double lotion, says the Gemara. He already said that you can you have to hold the Arav all by itself. Why do you repeat yourself and say, and you cannot be Yitza holding onto your Lulav that has two Aravas in it? I would think that's because you didn't put it down. You hear of Aaron Sittner. If you put it down and then you lift it up again, aim a loy, like Nusach Ashkenaz, smarter, not smarter, who cares? Aim a loy, Kamash Malon. Fine. You have to hold it by itself. You cannot hold on to the Lulav. Even if you put the Lulav down, you lift it up again. You're not Yoytze. You have to go around the Bima, whatever you're doing, with its own Arabas. Rav Chizda, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. So I got an email yesterday from Chaim Weissman from Lakewood. And he says, listen, I don't know any other place in Shas like this. That what? We always hold on to five Aravas and Ayushan Arava. Where do we get the number five? Can anybody find it here? So, Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda, so let's remember this. Rav Chizda says, two Aravas in the Lulav. That's enough. Okay, so we have to remember, this is a mandoma called Rav Chizda. Rav's father-in-law, who says, two Aravas is enough. Become sure now the Gemara says, and how many Aravas do you need for the Arava? Omar of Nachman, Gimel, Badi, al Nachman. Three. So we have two, and we have three. Three twigs with nice, juicy leaves. V'Rav Sheishes, Omar of Hilo, Allah, Echad, Ubad, Echad. Says Rav Sheishes, even one leaf that's not even attached to the twig, and one twig. Says the Gemara, what? You're going to hold a, a, you can't even see it, it's not Nikr. End of the Sugya. One twig with one leaf. One sheet that says three twigs with nice leaves on it. And Rav Chiza says you can even do two twigs, two Aravas from your Lulav. Where do we get five as Rav Chaim Weissman, Baal Mechaber, Sfarim, who came to the Siyum in Lakewood? And I learned with him in Pesach. So, the Mishabura brings, and he, he knows about this, he told me also. It's based on that result. But what he's saying is, and it's, I think it's fascinating, every sector of Yiddishkeit, modern Orthodox, Sfardim, Ashkenazim, Hasidim, Taimonim, they all take five based on that result, Kabbalah. It's nowhere mentioned in the Gemara, and that result says it, and that's how great that result is. That all of Klai Yisrael, without exception, they took it, Based on Kabbalah. The Shukhunar and Tafresh Samach Dalid brings this Ariza. And he says you could be Yaitza with one Arava, but it's disgusting to do so. You should take three, but according to Ariza, five. All the Psulm that we have by a regular Arava, Gazel and Shaul, does not work with the Arava of Ishana. But Rabbi Chaim Kanevsky Paskin said if it's a little, it's a little dry, you are Yaitza because it's only a Zecher to the Beis Migdash. And when you hit the Ishanas, you hit it on the ground. Some Sfardim, the Kavachayim says, literally on the dirt. You can't even do it on tiles. 
But I've seen people try to knock off all the leaves on benches and on chairs. That's not la halacha. La halacha is on the ground. In the Mishnah Bura, it doesn't. The Mishnah Bura doesn't bring this, but the Rashi right here on the spot does, and the kids of Shulchan Aruch and the Chayyadim do bring it. Rashi over here says, "You want to look in Rashi? Rashi Dibra a maskil ola echad bevadechad." Says Rashi at the end. Vahash the nohagu lahavi murbiyos. Now the minig is to bring beautiful, very tall aravas. Anofim arukim v'yafim. I've seen people in shul that exaggerate. I think. 30 foot aravas. Hit the ceiling, bend over. You see those videos. Sheminkira mitzvah ba'ayin yofa. You should do a mitzvah again. The idea of a mitzvah with a beautiful eye. Don't be karg on those little tiny aravas. Get the murubiyos. Okay, how much does it cost already? Another dollar, you get the longer ones. Great. We don't have time for more stuff, so we'll go weiter. The Rebbe Shlom Zaman says, you could be yoytza with somebody else's arava, provided that it still has the leaves. One person, the Maharit, the Maharit, says that you should knock off all the leaves because it's like it's a, it resembles our chatayim. Knock off all the chatayim. The Chayadim says those who knock off all the leaves, they're just imitating the babies who have a special hana, the little kids who like to knock off all the leaves, and there's zero reason to knock off all the leaves. Do whatever you like to do. My father always used to tell me, do not knock off all the leaves. It's shtusim. Okay. Says the Gemara. I don't know if he said the word shtusim, but. You're supposed to do it. The halacha says you knock it five times, whatever, three times. I don't remember the amount anymore. And that's it. Okay. Says the Gemara. Omar Aivu. Aivu was the father of Rav. I saw in front of Rav We're going to have a few stories of Rav Lezab I saw somebody bring in a Rav. Shokel. He took that Rav from him. Chabit, Chabit. He did not know him. It doesn't mean to bang it on the floor like you would read. Veloy Baruch and he didn't make a bracha. Why? Kasavar minig nevimu. He held that darava is only instituted by nevim and just a minig and not a chiyuv. And if you look over here, there's a vav by the word shakil. That means that that's the halacha. The halacha is today not to make a bracha on a rava and we don't make a bracha on it. Why? Because it's a minig nevim, not a yesoid nevim. It's not an institution, but it's a reinstitution. Whatever. Aivu. Now the Gemara talks about Aivu, but it's tricky. Because it's not the same Aivu. A second ago, it was the father of Rav. Now it says, Aivu v'chizkiyo b'nei brati the Rav. In other words, these are the grandchildren of Rav. In other words, the great-grandchild of Aivu, the original. He was named after his great-grandfather. I told Arava to come to Rav, and the same story. They brought Arava to Rav. Chavit, he did not know him. Chavit, Chavit, Veloy Berich. They didn't make a bracha. Why? Kosova, meaning Nevimu. You don't make a bracha. Amar Ayvoy. Have I came to come to Rav Lozav Tzali? Now goes back to the original Ayvoy, the father of Rav. Oz Kamei Augavra. The Gemara says an unbelievable story, and this is related to the email. What was his name? Oh, I forgot his name already. I have to find it. I know we're running out of time. Here we go. Isaac Sardar. Okay. How can the Rebbe Lazar tell the cost of Kamehau Gavro? Person came. Omele. Kuyosisli. I'm very, very wealthy. I own villages. Karmayoisli. I have vineyards. Zisayisli. I own many olive trees. Vasu bene Kuyosa. I even own all the people there. That's what I saw in the Ben Yoyada. Everybody belongs to me. They all work for me all the time. They take a hoe and they hoe around the tree. And how do I pay them? They eat from the olives. Am I doing the right thing or not? Now, what we have to understand is there's no iser here at all. Why is there no iser? Because they did it in a way of a heter as we're going to see soon. Zero iser. He just asked, is there a problem of Maris Ayin? I'm explaining according to the Mepharshim. Is it, is it a, the right thing to do? Omar lei lo yarich. It's not the right thing. It says, You don't do business with, with the olives. They shouldn't be taking it as their payment. Says the Gemara, Have a koshavik lei vazil. He left. Omar. So Rabbi Lozabar Tzadik says, I lived in, on, in this place right over 40 years. 
I haven't seen I've never seen a person like this. So beautiful his actions. Unbelievable. What's going on here? What was so beautiful? The guy comes and makes a U-turn. Comes back. And now what should I do? Go be mafker all your olives to the poor people. But then and pay them a little bit. Fine. So real quickly, it's already eight o'clock here in Eretz Yisrael. Why is he such a big tzaddik? So Rabbi Yisrael Salanter says, beautiful. He says he came to the rabbi, asked him a question. I mean, doing the right thing does it look good? Not good. The rabbi said, no, it doesn't look good. He didn't stop for a second and ask him, so what should I do? So how do I get out of this? What's about? The first thing is, he ran like a Meshuggah back to his villages and said, stop, stop working right now. And then when he was done with that, then he made a U-turn and he came back to the rabbi and said, okay, and now what? You hear? That's this email right over here. When you have an inspiration, when you have the, the, some, something special, I want to start that Fiyoyimi. Says, what's his name? I keep on forgetting his name. Okay, here he is. Says Isaac. He took that inspiration immediately, immediately he went and he learned the daf. He didn't say, okay, I'm going to start the new Perek tomorrow, the new Mesech, the Beitzah, starting two weeks from now. Right now, today. Right now. That's, I haven't seen somebody like that in 40 years, says the Gemara. In 40 years, I haven't seen somebody like that. He took that inspiration, ran, it's a beautiful pshat. Otherwise, how do you, what, what, what's so big? Okay, so yes. Some say, okay, because it's Lefim Shur Sadin, everything. Now the Gemara says, what is the big problem? Because Shkushe Mishari, what? You let a hoe a field, you let a. Says the Gemara. On the seventh year, Tishmetena. What does that mean? Tishmetena Melakashkesh. You shouldn't hoe a field. Unatashto Melasakel. You shouldn't take the stones out. Or a book of Rachomo, Trekis Kshushi Yavu. There's two types. Chatzatumi Pile. One is to fill in the gaps. Vechadavruilani. If you're trying to better the tree, and that's why Hilchas Shemitah are complicated. You have a garden. I have a garden right here. I have no clue what to do, what to tell the guy. Could the guy come, trim, not? So if it's, if it's to better the plant, you cannot do it. But if it's that the plant shouldn't die, then you could. So that was going on. All they were doing over there is they were trying to make sure that the, 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 the olive trees or whatever trees don't die. And that's okay. But boy, say, have a wonderful day. Goyach. Goyach to you guys. What? I don't answer to any Rebbe's. I answer to Ellie. What's Rebbe? I am in Bidud. Aleichem Shalom, I'm in Bidud, yeah. No. Not after Wednesday. I, I had to stay in America that extra day for the wedding and uh, whatever. That's why I'm in Bidud now. But it's okay. It was worth it. Correct. No, no, it's not Kedai. It's not worth coming now. Shabbat Shalom. It's not Kedai. Not Kedai to come. Yeah. Hey, Kati. I got your email. I got it. I have to read it one day. Shkoyach. Yeah. When you get out of When you get I don't know. I I I didn't do the cheshbon. I, I I flew in. I got here on Monday, right? So I guess on Sunday. You didn't get an email. Um. Right. Then you say. Uh, a Victor. 
Where's that Vigdor? Where's that Vigdor? Anybody see a Vigdor? Who is that guy? Who is he? It doesn't seem like it's the, the thing to do these days. Unless you want to sit in your hotel room for seven days straight.